So I've noticed something really interesting over the years. The way a person counts and keeps track of the beat can positively or negatively impact the way they sound. Today, I'm going to show you two modes of counting. One will help you build your raw skill. The other will allow you to reach higher tempos when you're playing actual music. It could also help you sound less square when you're in the throes of playing an actual tune. Today on Banjo Quest. All right, so to start today's lesson, I'm going to first give you the bird's eye perspective. I'm going to play in both modes of keeping track of the beat, so you can sort of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to talk about each mode in turn. So I have my metronome set up at 180 BPM. I'm going to play you a little bit of Roustabout, the tune we're working on for Banjo Quest over on Patreon. And then I'm going to half 180 into 90 BPM and play the same tune or a snippet of the tune. So you guys get to hear back to back the different modes of keeping track of the beat. Here we go. <laughs> Here's 90. Let's talk about the first mode of timekeeping. We're going to call it normal time. I've set the metronome up for 180 BPM. Every time that metronome clicks, it gets a downstroke. Right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It's very clear, there's not a lot of wiggle room. It's a very fine resolution of beat keeping. And this is super useful when you're working on exercise or just building basic technique because it doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room, especially when it comes to your upstrokes. So I can plug in at 180 BPM, I can do some exercises. Slow it down, you can really hear the difference between that downstroke and upstroke. Every downstroke is right on that click and every upstroke is on the and between the clicks. It doesn't allow you to, to stray very much from that nice clear eighth note pattern. But there are problems with keeping time in this mode when you're trying to play music. Two reasons. One is that's 180 BPM. I can tap my foot that fast. I'm already getting tired. <laughs> just a lot of work and you can feel already I'm going to have problems reaching higher tempos because there is just only so fast I can tap my foot. The other thing normal time prevents in my experience of watching players count normal time when they're playing music is that it creates a very square interpretation of the beat and the phrasing because every downstroke is getting a click and they feel sort of imprisoned by that eighth note pattern. There's no way to escape and it locks them into this very downstroke centric feel. All right, let's make this super clear. When you're playing your drills, your banjo blitz drills, use normal time. That fine resolution will allow you to really dial in your eighth note patterns. When you're playing music, you're going to want to play in halftime, and that's what we're talking about next. All right, so halftime. I've got the metronome set up at 90 BPM. 
Ah, oh, I got room to breathe. Even though it's the same tempo, I will be moving my hand at the same speed as the 180 BPM metronome count before. I still am only tracking every other downstroke with the click. I've got room to breathe. It feels so much better to me. Now, let's forget about the metronome. Let's see how that feels when I'm stomping my foot. And you're gonna hear how natural it sounds to count in halftime when you're playing actual music. <laughs> Doesn't that feel more groovy, funky, just better? It does to me. So when you are playing your tunes, slip into this halftime, count with every other downstroke. So there are two big advantages when you're playing music and using a halftime beat. The first is that you are going to be able to have a much higher speed cap. You're going to be able to reach higher tempos because you're tracking less beats. So. For example, for roustabout, two, three, four. By tracking that halftime instead of all of my downstrokes, I am much freer to surge on my tempos. I can reach higher tempos. Even when I'm not tapping, I feel more free to get at those higher tempos when I'm not mentally tracking every downstroke that I'm playing. The other reason why halftime is so powerful when you're playing music is it allows me to feel less square against the beat. Because I've got more space between clicks, <laughs> to get way more or feel more comfortable with my anticipated notes and not be so square against the click. I can get the notes between the click much better. And when you look at that B part in Roustabout, if I'm tracking every beat, like that versus, Suddenly, when I'm counting in halftime and feeling the beat in halftime, that fourth string becomes the upbeat. And that can be a really powerful way to create syncopation. So let's talk about a few caveats here. Tapping your foot well takes training. And I know that that sounds ridiculous to a lot of you, but I've observed it time and time again where a student will come in for a lesson or during a workshop and I'm watching the student play music and they're tapping and their foot is tapping something completely unrelated to what they're playing on the instrument. This is all about being intentional about what you do and how you present your music to the world. And so if you want to be good at this, just like everything we do on this channel, it takes practice and training. Don't take for granted the difficulty or the ease at which some people tap their feet. It's not easy to get that part of your music working well. It takes diligence, 
focus, and careful practice. So you need to build in some self-assessment time. Use all of your tools available. Record yourself, either with audio or video. See how your foot is matching up with the rest of your playing. You'll know from that, from your recordings of yourself, you'll know immediately if things are going right or if things are going awry. All right, so here's my big conclusion for you. Here's the take home. When you're playing, exercises, or doing things that involve technique building, looping small phrases, playing at slower tempos, use normal time. That means every time you do a downstroke, it gets a click or a stomp. When you're playing a tune, the vast majority of old time tunes should be counted in halftime. You're feeling the beat with every other downstroke. And the biggest conclusion of them all, my favorite part of this is that you can't take counting for granted. The way you track the beat really does matter. And if you haven't given it any thought, now's the time to start thinking about it. So I hope you guys find this useful. I hope this helps clarify different modes of counting for different contexts when you're playing the banjo. But I also hope you are all doing well. Now is a really trying time for all of us. I think about my musician colleagues and friends all over the world at all different levels. And I think now more than ever, is a great time to be making music, especially when we can't leave our homes and we're stuck inside with our families, oftentimes with nothing to do. Now is the time where music matters even more than ever. So take some time, make music for yourself, make music for your family, dive into this stuff, spend time, practice, stay safe, and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest. <laughs>